The Awe of God by John Bevere is a book that really challenged the way I thought about the fear of the Lord. You see, I always thought about it as this deep reverence and respect for the Lord, but this book actually touches on a component of the fear of the Lord that I had never heard of elsewhere and never really thought about before reading this book. I wanna share with you an overview of how this book is structured, a summary of his main idea, which is what I mentioned a little bit ago, as well as some of my thoughts and my personal opinions about this book after reading it, as well as a link that you can get yours for yourself. The interesting thing about this book is that it's structured almost similar to a devotional, but it's not a devotional. The book is designed in a way where each chapter builds on top of the one before, so you can't just drop into any chapter you want and then feel like you can get a hang of it, which you may be able to understand what it's saying, but it builds on top of everything before, so you need what you've read before in order to really work through what you're reading now. What distinguishes this book from many other books is A, the way it's structured like I just said, but also at the end of each chapter there are these practical things that you can do to make it personal as it says. There's a passage that it recommends to read. There's a point based on what the chapter was mentioning. There's a ponder section where you can think about the question that it has written out. There's a prayer that you can pray. And then there's a profession, something that you proclaim or something that you can say. You don't have to, but it's, it's there to help you or allow you to read it and do something with it. Another distinct feature about this book is that the chapters really aren't that long. They're really I don't know, 10 pages or less, which makes it super fun to read because, especially with nonfiction for me, I don't like when the chapters are long because it takes a while to read because I'm a slow reader and I don't want to rush through it like a fiction book would. Looking at the table of contents, it's structured in a six week format, meaning that each day you read one chapter and after six weeks you'll have made it through the entire book, or it mentions that you can read twice a day and you'll get through it in I think, what, three weeks then? If it's four, six, but you can read it twice a day, so that's three. I found myself when I was reading this slacking on some of the days and it ended up being days where I would double up on a chapter because I had missed the specific reading for that day. And I think I hindered myself from actually absorbing the material as much as I could have. I went through this book with a good friend of mine and it was great to meet each week to talk about how we applied each chapter or work through each chapter. But I could honestly tell that there were weeks where we would meet and I would say, yeah, you know what? I crammed and read all six chapters last night, so I couldn't apply it as much as I really hoped to. So what's the main idea of this book? Like I said before, it's about the awe of God. It's about the fear of the Lord, not specifically the reverence and respect for the Lord, which you should have, which this book does talk about. That is a foundational component. But what this book talks about about is this deep intimacy with the Lord in a way that you're afraid of losing that fellowship and intimacy with him. The example that he gave in this book is imagine you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, father, mother, and you want to be loving with them. You want to be intimate, maybe not with a father, son, mother, daughter, father, daughter relationship, but husband-wife relationship, if you want to be truly intimate and in love with them, you can't be afraid of them. Why would you be able to give your all if you're afraid of them yelling at you or screaming at you or hitting you or that's an extreme, but an example. It would be silly to think and honestly, impossible for me to genuinely and truly love my wife if I was afraid of her. Like that just doesn't build the intimacy that would be considered love. And that's what this book talks about. This deep intimacy with the Lord that you're afraid of losing that fellowship with him, which means then you want to flee from sin. You want to run away from sin and turn your back to it so that you can run hard after the Lord and that fellowship that you have with him. Let's pause for a second. The point I'm trying to make here is that this book talks about the fear of the Lord. It doesn't mean being afraid of the Lord because you can't be intimate with somebody that you're afraid of. And as Christians, we're called to have a deep, intimate relationship with the Lord. And if you're like me, you only really ever think about the fear of the Lord as this reverence, as this, no, like better, better make sure I'm not falling short here. But putting it in that deep, intimate fear of losing fellowship with the Lord way is pretty profound because that's just such a new idea for me when it comes to the fear of the Lord. There are two things from this book that really stood out to me that I have kept with me to this day after reading the book. I actually have them hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Aha, here we go. You probably can't see it. 
Maybe I'll take a video after. But on my watch face is actually two of the things that he talked about in his book that I put on my watch so that I can look at every day and be reminded of these things. The first is what obedience truly looks like. John talks about this for a good section of the book and there's five components to obedience. One, obey immediately. Two, obey when it doesn't make sense. Three, obey when you don't see a personal gain. Four, obey even when it's painful. And five, obey until completion. Those five measures of obedience are things that in moments of temptation that I experience, I say to myself, okay, obey immediately. Obey when it doesn't make sense. Obey when I don't see a personal gain and, and so on. Because I know my flesh wants to indulge in those temptations, but I also know what obedience to the Lord truly looks like, especially with these five steps. It's that helpful nudge that I need in those moments that I can say, you know what, I can overcome this. The second thing that really stood out to me from this book was John's idea of building trust with the Lord. What does it look like to build trust with the Lord? What does it look like for him to trust you? Similar to obedience, John lays out four points on what it looks like to build this trust. First is unconditional obedience. The second is absolute integrity in all moments and all circumstances. Third is unwavering priority of his desires first. And number four, knowing his heart and always choosing his will. And the formula that supersedes and provides the groundwork for this to actually work is consistency over time. I put these on my watch face because these were two specific areas that I wanted to make goals for this year and really think about more often than just reading the book and then saying, that was good. Now, uh, what next? Those four steps of building trust with the Lord stood out to me because that's something that I desire. I desire to build trust with the Lord and to be so close with the Lord that I can say these things about myself, that I do unconditionally obey the Lord, that I have absolute integrity when it comes to what he says, that I choose his desires first, that I have actually an unwavering priority of his desires, and that I always choose his will. That is such a beautiful picture of what it looks like to really be following Jesus and having this awe of him like this book talks about. I would recommend this book for you to read because I really do like that short chapter format where you can easily digest it but still be challenged to do something every day if you read it every day. If you're looking to learn more about what the fear of the Lord looks like, this is a good book for you to read. Because I know for me, I didn't really know practically what it looked like, but I knew factually what it was and still need some help with practically living it out because I am still not perfect and I still fall short often. Check out the link in the description and in the pinned comments to get a copy for yourself. Out of 10, I'd say I'd give this book a solid 9.5 out of 10. I also made a video reviewing the Bible that I currently use and am really enjoying. So on the screen now, you'll see that video. So check that out and join me over there in that video.